Hello, I'm Hugh Breslin from Microsemi, and in this video I'm going to be giving an introduction to the My5 embedded ecosystem, an overview of RISC-V, the My5, the tools you need to build and run projects using the My5, and the resources available to help you get started. This graphic represents the My5 ecosystem. Under Design Tools, we have Libro SOC, Libro SOC Polar Fire, the Firmware Catalog, and Soft Console. These are all the design tools needed to use the My5. Under CPUs, we have all of the variants of the My5, the ORV32 IMA, IMAF, and IMA AXI versions. Under Boards, we have all of the devices that the My5 will run on. The Polar Fire devices, RTG4, Smart Fusion 2 and Igloo 2. Operating systems are all of the ORTOSs or real-time operating systems that have been ported to the My5. In solutions, we have all of our sample designs using a My5 and benchmarks are all of our cores put through standardised tests and compared to other cores. Let's move on now and start having a look at RISC-V. So what is RISC-V? RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. This doesn't make a computer or a processor. It's an instruction set architecture, which is the interface between software, which you write in your computer as code, and hardware, which is the processor. It's an open source ISA, which is great as you don't need a license to use it, and you can see exactly how it works. One main thing, it's not ARM, which stands for Advanced RISC Machine. Using an ARM core requires a license to be paid. ARM is known as a closed ISA, and the Cortex-M1 and Cortex-M3 are ARM-based. RISC-V is efficient due to its support for lower cycles per instruction. So instead of long, specific and complex instructions being sent to the core that take ages to execute, it uses small, generic and simple instructions. It's also extensible with the base you can add to. Our core is called the My5. The My is for the Micro Semi and the 5 is the 5 from RISC-V. It's got great portability as it's open source, so you can move from platform to platform easily. As I've said, RISC-V is very efficient and it's very easy to implement. We've made it even easier with the development of the My5. There's an organization called the RISC-V Foundation and it has over 100 members. The mission is to standardize, protect and promote the free and open RISC-V ISA and its hardware and software ecosystem for use in all computing devices. So why should you use a My5 core over one of the M3s or even at all? Well, you get the freedom to innovate as you please, as you can see exactly what's going on in unobfuscated code. It's seen as such an in innovation that industry leaders have gotten behind it. Because certain aspects of the ISA are fixed or frozen, you can be sure that your code will continue to work from now into the future. The designs you make can be easily moved over to an ASIC, which is an application specific integrated circuit. And once again, the great thing about RISC-V is that you don't need to get a proprietary license from ARM. Now, let's have a look at the My5 itself. There are three variants of the My5 core, and they can all be found under processors in the Libro catalogue. They all look relatively similar, but they're very different. The difference is in the name. The first core is the MyV or V32 L1 AXI. The second is the MyV or V32 IMA L1 AHB. And the third is the MyV or V32 IMAF L1 AHB. We've got two that are IMA and one that's IMAF, and then two that are AHB and one that's AXI. I'm going to explain what these names mean piece by piece. Let's start at the beginning. The MyV we already know, so let's talk about the ORV32 and so on. The ORV stands for RISC-V, and the 32 stands for 32-bit. I've already mentioned that the ISA is extensible, and this means that you get a base and you can build on that. The minimum you need to have is the ORV32i. The i is the extension and it's the base integer instruction set. Without this, you can't have a RISC-V core. 
If you look at this table, you can see that some of the extensions are frozen. That means they can't change and your code is guaranteed to run on a RISC-V CPU. These are all of the extensions here, but I'll show you on one of the cores. Let's have a look at the MyV or V32 IMAF core. We know that the I is the integer instruction set, and you can see that M stands for the integer, multiplication and division extension, A is for the atomic instructions extension, and F is for the single precision floating point extension. If you ever come across one that you don't know about, you can simply Google RISC-V extensions and the full table is available online. There is one thing to mention, and that's if you have a core that's, for example, an ORV32 IMAFD, you can actually call this core an ORV32G. The G stands for general purpose, and you can still have other extensions after it, but it is simply the IMAFD grouped together. Now that we know what the first two chunks of the naming convention mean, first that it's a MyV, second that it's a 32-bit RISC-V core, and third what extensions it has, now let's look at what the L1 is and the difference between AXI and AHB. The L1 stands for the cache. Cache is very important when choosing a processor. The processors in your computer probably have a much larger cache and more layers, for example L1, L2 and L3. The My5 has one cache, which is the L1 cache. It's very fast temporary storage for the core, which is directly built onto the processor. This allows for a zero wait state delay. It's split so there's an L1D cache and an L1I cache. The L1D cache is for data storage and the L1I cache is for instruction storage. Both of these are 8 kilobytes. The cache allows the processor to save time waiting for memory as it's built directly onto the core. Because of this, the core can check the L1 cache before getting information from memory and start working straight away if the data it needs is present there. Finally, in the naming convention, we have the AHB and AXI variants of the core. These are both types of bus master that control the flow of data or traffic on the IO pathway or system bus. They were created by ARM and are part of the AMBA bus spec. AHB stands for Advanced High Performance Bus. It has a shared read and write channel with transactions starting at 16 bits. It was designed for systems with high performance and high clock frequencies. AXI stands for Advanced Extensible Interface. It has read data, read address, write data, write address and write response channels, with transactions starting at 64 bits. It was designed for high bandwidth systems with low latency. Now that we know what the full name means, let's have a look on a MI5. If you have a look at the core on the left, we know it's a MI5, and ORV32 means it's a 32-bit RISC-V core, IMA with the integer, multiplication and atomic extensions, with an L1 cache and an AXI interface. If we have a look at the core on the right, we know it's an I5, it's an ORV32, so a 32-bit RISC-V core, with the integer, multiplication, atomic and floating point extensions. It has an L1 cache and an AHB interface. Let's have a look at what the MEM and MMIO pins are actually for. The MEM is connected to the memory in the design. This could be DDR or SRAM for example. It's used by the cache controller to refill the instruction and data caches. This is the L1 cache we've already covered. The cached address range starts at 80 million hex. MMIO stands for Memory Mapped Input Output. This is basically a connection for the I.O. peripherals such as GPIO and UART. The uncached address range starts at 60 million hex. As I said, the MMIO is used to connect peripherals. As you can see, if you follow the blue line, it is connected to core AHB to APB3, which is connected to core APB3 for the peripherals. If you follow the orange line, you can see the MEM pin connecting to the core AHB light and the DDR memory. So, before we move on, let's summarise what we've gone over so far. We have three versions of the MI5 core, the ORV32 IMA AHB, the ORV32 IMAF AHB, 
and the ORV32 IMA AXI versions. We know that RISC-V is extensible and we can find out or know what the different extensions are after the ORV32 in the name. The core has an L1 8KB data cache and an 8KB instruction cache. And we know what the MEM and MMIO pins are for. Now let's have a look at what we need to use a MI5 in a design. Our design suite is called Libro. We have two versions of Libro, Libro SOC and Libro SOC Polar Fire. You can run through a full design flow from synthesis to programming your device. Libro includes the firmware catalog, which will allow you to generate drivers for IP cores in your design. Let's quickly have a look at what you need to write a program and run it on the Mi5. We've got our own platform for developing programs for the Mi5, and it's called Soft Console. It's compatible with both Windows and Linux, and it's an Eclipse-based IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. It uses the OpenOCD and GDB tools for debugging, and it comes bundled with several sample projects. The most common one we demo is called Blinky. If Blinky is running correctly, the LEDs will flash on and off, and a hello message will be sent over UART. Soft Console also has a built-in terminal emulator that can be used for UART. Finally, let's have a look at some of the resources that are available to help you get started using a Mi5. As I said earlier, several ORTOSs have been ported to run on the Mi5. You can find all of them on our GitHub page github.com forward slash risk 5 on dash microsemi dash fpga. They contain all of the project files to run in Soft Console, and some examples are FreeORTOS, Minute, LightOS, and UCOS. Projects also come with setup instructions and a sample design to run them on. We also have several sample designs available on our GitHub page. They contain all of the project files for Libro and a FlashPro Ex Express file, which allows you to program your board without having to open the project. Designs are available for all of the devices that support the Mi5. And designs can be used to run the Mi5 Blinky test program, which is included with Soft Console. Here are some helpful links for the different tools you might need to download to get started, including Libro SoC, Soft Console, and then as well some information on the Mi5 ecosystem. And don't forget to check out the RISC-V Foundation website, risc5.org.